Hey guys, MCU Collector here with another video finally here in January. Very few and far between. Not a lot of action figures coming out. But I'm bringing you my personal top 10 favorite figures of 2023. A lot of really good action figures that have come out this year. A lot of really, really good ones. Um, so many. It's hard to choose. It really is. And, and part of the problem is a lot of G.I. Joe figures came out that I never even got the chance to kind of play with or mess with. A bunch of Power Rangers figures that I didn't really review either. Um, a lot of Indiana Jones uh, Adventure Series figures that I still haven't opened. Like, I never got Wave 1, but I got all of Wave 2. I've got all of Wave... Wait, do I have all of Wave 2? I do have all of Wave 2. I have all of Wave 3, but I haven't opened any of Wave 2 or Wave 3 at all. Um, but... Yeah, just a lot of action figures that I, I haven't been able to review. But these ten here, um, nine of which I have reviewed, I believe. Um, but the Super 7 Megazord, I haven't reviewed. I got that at the tail end of 2023. Um, I got it for Christmas. Wade Unparalleled Universe gifted me the Super 7 Ultimate uh, Dino Megazord. And it's such a fun, awesome figure. Like, I can't tell you guys like how just how cool this figure is it's like if you are a fan of power rangers and you like the megazord that's the megazord figure to get it's just so much fun uh the fun factor is just insane with it i absolutely love it um i haven't put together actually how i would rank these top 10 it's kind of a weird video again i'm not the biggest fan of doing the top 10 because everyone's top 10 is going to be completely different i have certain rules for mine like people don't like like you see this uh scarlet spider figure here it's a 2024 spider-man wave sure but my rule is if i got it in 2023 why wouldn't i count it as a 2023 figure right if you get it in 2024 or if i had gotten it in 2024 it would be on a 2024 list but I got it in 2023 so for me that's the way I look at it I will judge it based on the year that I got the figure and and even if it's like a super old figure and I got it in that year I would technically consider it within that year I think because it's my personal favorite of the year not the top 10 best figures that came out in that year necessarily does that make sense? Weird. I know. We'll get on to it. I'm rambling. We're going to go through it. I'm going to try and keep this to one take. No fancy little transition. Like one, countdown, all this and that. I'm going to rank this realistically, honestly, right here on this video for you guys to see kind of how it would be. Because there's some awesome figures. There's probably better figures that came out this year. But for whatever reason, I chose these certain figures um, based on, you know, either the character or what the figure represents, or kind of so on and so forth there, if that makes sense. A um, lot of really good figures, and again, I had a lot of fun with all of these. So, if I were to rank them, this is going to be tricky, 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 how I would rank them. Because I don't even know. I'm looking at them like, damn. It, not only is it difficult to pick the 10, but to then rank them on what your top 10 is, is kind of crazy. Like, shit, right? Um... Ooh, I think uh, I think I'm gonna go number ten is gonna be the Black Widow figure because Black Widow is awesome, and this is the super articulated Avengers 60th anniversary Target exclusive. Very good figure. She has articulation all over. She's got the butterfly joints. She's got the inverted ab crunch. She's got the diaphragm, um, all pinless, double jointed elbows. Bicep swivel, double jointed knees, pinless, everything like that. Really good figure. I wish more female figures would come out this quality. We're not there yet. Maybe this will be the start to it. So Black Widow is my number 10. Uh, number 9. Number 9. Number 9. Number 9. Number 9. Uh, number 9. I'm going to go Indiana Jones. Indy. Um, the Indiana Jones Adventure Series. So finally we get a good 112 scale Indiana Jones action figure line. Um, some hit or misses, I would say, overall in the line. Um, you know, single joints because, you know, it's the Black Series team that's doing it and they love single joints and uh, Black Series collectors love single joints. <laughs> you know, I, I when I reviewed the Mandalorian figure, I knew it was going to happen. I was going to say, I, I want double jointed elbows and I want double jointed knees. And I knew the Black Series collectors would just have a field day with that and say, single joints look better and you get the same range of motion. You don't. I mean, the elbow, you, you potentially could, right? But the knee, you definitely don't on the knee. And then the, luckily on Indiana Jones, the knee has a good placement. But like on the Mandalorian figure, the knee is way too low. Um, 
So, anyway, I digress. Uh, Indiana Jones Adventure Series. This is the Raiders of the Lost Ark Wave 1 indie. Whether you have the Temple... Uh, the Temple Escape version or, or whatever, that deluxe one that came with the, like the pedestal thing, um, that would also be the good one because it's the same figure. I'm really happy with the Indiana Jones, so he's going to be my number nine just because it's an Indiana Jones action figure, an articulated premium figure, and I am very happy with that line and, um, that came out. So that's my number nine. So ten, nine, ooh, number eight, number eight, number eight, number eight, number eight. Number eight. Number eight. Number eight. Number eight, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Tasm Spider-Man. Um, is it the greatest Marvel Legends figure? Not necessarily, but it's the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man figure who has the best, absolute best movie suit. Um, although this one would kind of rival it, but the metallic blue throws me off a little bit. So I would say that the Andrew Garfield Tasm Amazing Spider-Man 2 suit is still the best movie spider-man suit there has been and now we have it in action figure form what well, this particular one is from the three pack that was exclusive to hasbro pulse whether you got the single pack release that actually came with the andrew garfield um head portrait scan um you know you could go with that one but this one was from the three pack they're essentially the same but you know the hand choices all this and that um but that one is going to be my number nine eight excuse me so look at that i'm already messing up the countdown number eight figure and this is how i'm going to keep track because i'm just going to go in that direction so now if i go to number seven i'm gonna go the blue centurion as the number seven figure this one has some qc issues um, I had one that fell off the shelf and the leg just snapped right off. I got a replacement and I just moved the leg a little bit and that mother that just snapped right off. Um, so then I got a third one. The third one is holding up. I don't touch him very often. but um, So just be careful of that. The reason why I have him in my top 10 is because look at him. Look at how awesome this is. If you were a fan of Power Rangers like I was when I, when I was a kid and when it came out, you probably saw Turbo. Like, nobody's watching Turbo now. Turbo doesn't really hold up too well, right? I didn't, I don't think so. But, but, they had some awesome characters and things going on there. Like the Phantom Ranger. Love the Phantom Ranger. Started in Turbo. When then we got the figure, he was labeled as in space. It's just crazy. But we also got Blue Centurion. I honestly never thought we would get an action figure of this. I remember as a kid... I had a bunch of Power Rangers toys. I think by the time Turbo really came around, I didn't really, I wasn't really into toys anymore. You know, obviously, I was getting a little bit older. Um, but I still, I'd be lying if I if I said that I never wanted an action figure of the Blue Centurion. I never had one as a kid, but as a grown ass man, I got a Blue Centurion action figure, and I absolutely love it. Um, QC issues aside. Just look at the sculpt. Look how cool he looks. He doesn't have his motorcycle, which is unfortunate, and that's a crime, Hasbro. But look at this guy. If you guys like the show, if you, you probably like the Blue Centurion, and now to have it in action figure form, I just I'm I'm in love with it. So there we go. So he is my number seven. Is it number seven? Ten, nine, eight, seven. Um, my number seven figure. Number six, I'm going to go with the uh, Spider-Man figure. This is the final swing Tom Holland suit at the very end. Are the colors perfect? Absolutely not. You know, we get these super dark web lines because everyone's like, we need painted web lines on a Spider-Man figure. Well, what happens when you do that is you get these crazy ass lines that aren't as predominant in the movie from the suit, but what other choice do they have, right? The blue was a more shiny, uh, metallic blue, sure. But action figure wise, we got all the points of articulation that we want. Fun figure. I'm really happy that we have it. So he's going to be my number six. Uh, my number five figure, I'm going to go with the Jada Toys Evil Ryu as Scarlet Spider takes a tumble. Uh, the Jada Toys Evil Ryu. This is the San Diego Comic Con exclusive. Um, this one was a crazy one. If you were at Comic Con in San Diego, you would know that every action figure collector wanted this guy. Like the the line at the Jada Toys booth was insane, crazy. 
because everyone wanted this, and rightfully so, because Jada Toys is killing it in the action figure game. They absolutely killed it with this Evil Ryu, the accessory packs that he come with, the overall presentation of the packaging and everything. Not that packaging matters that much, but it was pretty awesome and then very special to be a San Diego Comic Con exclusive to be able to get it on the preview night when everybody else wanted to get it as well and getting lucky to be able to get it uh, was pretty awesome. So the Jada Toys Street Fighter, the Ultimate Street Fighter 2, the Final Challengers, Evil Ryu, here we have it. He is going to be my number 5 figure. Let me put that there. Number 5. Number 4, I'm going to go with... The Mezco 112 Collective, the Mezco Toys 112 Collective, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Green Ranger. This was also a San Diego Comic Con exclusive or MDX if you were able to order it online. Um, I got it at San Diego Comic Con. I absolutely love this figure. The White Ranger just came out. I love that figure too, but the Green Ranger really holds a special place for me. I just like him more as the Green Ranger than I did the White Ranger. Although, I still love the White Ranger. Don't get me wrong. Big fan of the character of Tommy Oliver. Um, so here, the Mezco Toys 112 Collective Green Ranger um, is my number four figure. I'm very excited to get the whole entire team, the core team of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers to release by Mezco Toys at some point this year, maybe, who knows when. Um, they did have them on display at Comic-Con, and they looked awesome. So can't wait to get more Power Rangers. So number four is the Mezco Toys 112 Collective Green Ranger. So now we have a couple of more figures. And here in the top three, and which one is going to end up being the number one, I still actually haven't quite decided myself on how I'm going uh, to do that. And I'm going to um, have to kind of weigh it out here. I'm probably going to go... <sighs> I'm going to go number three, the G.I. Joe Classified Series Torpedo. Throw in eel interchangeable sure there are some different pieces between the two figures the amazon exclusivity to the eel was kind of crazy because it made it very difficult to get an army builder figure because everybody wanted it amazon sold out extremely fast there's shipping issues everything i think just recently people were like my order back from september just now shipped from amazon i just got it in that's crazy to me. You can't order it or anything, but their orders have finally shipped. That's how insane it was. So here with the Torpedo, same base body, again, slightly different pieces. Articulation points everywhere that you're going to want it. Sleek design to the figure itself. The accessories that he comes with is really cool. I didn't bring them all out. He's got the tank and everything. Uh, really, really like this figure. It was my most anticipated G.I. Joe Classified Series figure. It did not disappoint. Still does not disappoint. I absolutely love it. He is my top G.I. Joe Classified Series figure of the year. There's probably been better, but man, I have not opened very many G.I. Joe Classified Series figures um, that released last year. I have every single one, every single one, but haven't opened them all. So, number three... Hasbro G.I. Joe Classified Series, the Torpedo figure. I don't even remember what number he was. So here we have the final two. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy. If this was just Marvel Legends, easily number one would be the Ben Riley uh, Spider-Man figure. But he is going to be my number two for top figures of 2023. And the reason why is because... Um, there's technically not a lot of whole new to this figure. We've seen this body used multiple times. In fact, multiple figures throughout the year have released on this body. We had the Deadpool figure. We had uh, a Ben Ry a, no, a different Ben Riley figure. We've had the black costume Spider-Man from the animated series in the two-pack with Carnage. Um, I think that was that came out in 2023. So we've seen the body used multiple times. Um, but we didn't see it used on a Scarlet Spider. We got this new o rubber overlay for the sweater. We got this awesome new head sculpt with those shaped eyes there. Uh, solid, solid figure release for sure. Absolutely love it. It comes with all the hands that you could want um, and everything. No grip hands, I guess you'd want more hands. Uh, but awesome release. So he is my number two figure of 2023. Um, and here, my number one top figure of 2023. And you, you guys are going to think I'm crazy for this. And I get it, right? A lot of people don't like Super 7 figures, whether they think they're overpriced, they don't like the articulation. I understand all those criticisms, all personal opinions. But this figure, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Ultimates Wave, uh, 
wave three, wave four, no, wave three. It's wave three. The wave three ultimates, Dino Megazord. This figure is just so much damn fun. He's got good articulation, decent, not great. Granted, there's you know, think back to the show, right? It's a big ass, it's a dude in a big ass suit. Like he's only going to be able to move around so much. I've just had so much fun with this figure. Just it's been on my coffee table for the longest time just really looking at it and kind of moving it around and messing around with it i just absolutely love it um so you can move it around decently the elbows can only bend so much you got the hands that move around the torso just kind of ro rocks side to side a little bit the legs can move a little bit you can kick you can get into walking poses and things like that but when i look at this i'm basically looking at a dude in a suit and it just like it jumped out of the screen and I absolutely love it. One thing that you do want to be extremely careful if you got one of these, you really want to heat up the legs because there is some bend at the knee, but you want to be careful because those could snap. So make sure you warm that up to be able to do it, um, which is something that I definitely did take the time to do it. And here we have it. And just looking at him, moving him around a little bit, moving the head and everything, just a whole bunch of fun. He's got some accessories. I think he's got like some alternate hands. He comes with the sword and everything i haven't even taken all the accessories out but i just play with the megazord itself and just kind of hold them in my hand and kind of pose them around and it's just so much fun i absolutely love it uh i can't think wait enough i really wanted this figure you know i didn't pre-order it and a lot of super seven figures go on discount so i'm thinking you know maybe i'll wait for it i was hoping at designer con super seven would have it at their booth unfortunately they did not so then i didn't get it and then after designer con i was thinking i would probably just order it here soon uh but then wade kept saying hey i'm sending you something um did you get it be on the lookout i had the tracking and then it showed up i'm like no way this is crazy. I opened it right up and immediately fell in love with it because just look at it. This is the Dino Megazord. When you watch the show, when you see it fighting, this is what you see. Yo, you don't have all the pieces that flap around. You don't put pieces together. Like I understand the appeal of that. I have the the you know the Zord Ascension Project Dino Megazord, but this guy just boom like that. Here he is. I just love it so. Even for me, it's a surprise that it's got my top figure of 2023. But if you guys had this figure in hand, I think you would understand. The Super 7 Rangers, I could get it hit or miss. To me, it's pure nostalgia. Reminds me of the old toys and everything like that. Their Zord figures are top notch. The Tyrannosaurus um, uh, Zord is amazing. I have both Dragon Zords, the regular release and the San Diego Comic-Con black and gold. I've opened the black and gold. I haven't even opened that regular version, but those things are awesome. These Zord figures by Super 7, they do an amazing job and it hurts me so much that the White Tiger Zord, um, got canceled that it didn't have enough pre-orders. I can't believe you know, we're not going to be able to see that. Hopefully, there's still enough pre-orders. The black and gold version of the Dino Megazord gets released. I'm hoping that still happens. Um, I can't wait to finish. Eventually, I will get all the Rangers to fill out the team and everything like that. But if you're going to collect any of them, get the Zords. But if you're going to get one, get the Ultimates Wave 3 Dino Megazord. My favorite figure of 2023. So remember guys, this is my personal list. This is my feelings on it. You guys will likely have an extremely different list and you guys probably judge a little bit of what I put them on mine. But keep in mind, personal opinions, a lot of it is going to be nostalgia based. A lot of it is just going to be how I feel about characters and everything like that. So you guys let me know down in the comments below, what do you think of my top 10? Number 10, the Target exclusive Avengers 60th Anniversary Black Widow. Number 9, the Indiana Jones Adventure Series Raiders of the Lost Ark. Number 8, the Amazing Spider-Man 2 uh, Andrew Garfield Spider-Man. Number seven, the Blue Centurion Power Rangers Lightning Collection. Number six, the Marvel Legends Final Swing Spider-Man from No Way Home. Number five, the Evil Ryu Jada Toys Ultra Street Fighter 2 The Final Challengers. Number four, the Mesco Toys 112 Collective Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Green Rangers San Diego Comic-Con Exclusive. Number three, the Hasbro G.I. Joe Classified Series Torpedo. Number two, the Marvel Legends Ben Riley Scarlet Spider. And again, 
I got mine in 2023. That's why he is on a 2023 list for me. It makes sense. Like if it's my favorite figures of 2023 and I got it in 2023, it goes on my 2023 list. And then the Ultimates uh, Dino Megazord. So my top 10, let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comments below. And let me know what your personal top 10 figures of 2023 uh, would be. It doesn't, it could be all Marvel Legends. It could be all G.I. Joe. It could be all you know, Power Rangers, it could be all wrestlers, it could all be all Black Series, whatever it is that you collect, let me know down in the comments below. But again, for me, my personal top 10 of 2023.